I got the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This here, not... Well, it was on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. It's actually from the new Observer. Reggie Parks, a journeyman wrestler who may be best known as the maker of championship belts for pro wrestling and other combat sports, died October 7 at the age of 87. He passed away suddenly. He had just a few weeks ago been in Vegas for the Cauliflower Alley Convention, had seen many of his friends. He was known for having a great physique, which he kept well into his 40s, where he remained lean and muscular, worked for years under a mask as the Avenger to hide his face, which had aged. He did most of the championship belts in the 70s, 80s, and 90s for almost every promotion, made a number of belts for the UFC and boxing as well. Virtually all of the iconic title belt designs in WWF and WCW were handcrafted by Parks, Native of Edmonton, started wrestling for Stu Hart at 20 in 1955. Went all over the world until 1982. WWE enhancement talent until 1986. Go-to guy when it came to making a championship belts. At times, because of his rock-hard abs, he would do the cast-iron stomach gimmick where he'd let heels punch him in the stomach. He'd flex his abs and not sell a gimmick made more famous by Pepper Gomez. Actually, it was made more famous by Harry Houdini, who was then killed by that same, I shouldn't call it a spot. 1977, he briefly held the international heavyweight title in the Amarillo Territory, winning it from Johnny Weaver, losing it to Cyclone Negro. So yeah, if you, man, the winged eagle, the greatest wrestling belt of all time ever, Arguably. Crafted by... It's not even arguable, Mike. It's crafted by... uh, Please, the man passed away. Hey, bottom line, that's the whole point, Brian. That's the whole point, is no matter what belt you thought was the best belt, whether it was the Winged Eagle, whether it was the Domed Globe, whether you were a little bit older and you grew up back in the day, and and one of those old belts, the Southern-style belt that a lot of promotions would use, he made... All of the iconic belts that you grew up with. So no matter what territory you were in, and for a lot of people, like that U.S. heavyweight title belt that Magnum T.A. had, Nikita Koloff had, that they used for a lot of different designs, too. And again, no matter where you were, all of his belts were awesome. And they're all iconic memories. And he's one of those guys that, when it comes to like the Observer Hall of Fame, and when it comes to any Hall of Fame, I think you need to honor people that were great for your game whether they be announcers whether they be industry people no matter what they are and reggie parks is one of those people that is as you know valuable as anybody because when you think back to your youth you think back and you think of the wrestler but for a lot of people they think of the belt too you know that's the most iconic part of the promotion they grew up with was the championship belt and that proves itself today when people battle with the winged eagle and with whatever else anybody thinks the best belt was well, by the way it's a uh, it's uh, approved here on our chat that the winged eagle is the greatest belt of all time but as i was going to say <laughs> the uh, you go to WWE shop they've actually got a a new and improved winged eagle if you're interested in grabbing one out of respect for Reggie Parks, and it's <laughs> it's more the old winged eagle that they had at WWE shop. They've got the curved sidebars, which are not attached to the main plate, which made collectors, you know, they were very upset about that. It should be it should be attached to the to the main plate. Well, they got a new uh, two tone version, which is attached to the main plate. I, I presume they're still up there. They were a couple of months ago. But uh, the thing with Reggie Parks is. The the replicas on WWE.com, I mean, they're nice replicas. They're going to cost you 400 bucks or whatever. But, I mean, they're made largely the same way uh, that Reggie would have made them in the sense that it's the same sort of metal. It's the same gold plating. It's not real leather. It's the, the fake leather. But the fake leather that, that WWE has is using, it's pretty good. But the point of this is you can grab a replica that is probably... Uh, make belt makers mad, but you know, ninety to ninety-five percent is is uh, in terms of like workmanship, and maybe ninety percent because you're not getting the leather strap. But it's it's similar to what you would have got from Reggie Parks. But the difference is, it wasn't made by Reggie Parks. It was not handcrafted by Reggie Parks. And and there are differences, but the difference is, it's one of those deals where what Reggie did was was different and better. 
But if you want to grab a Reggie Parks winged eagle, you're going to pay like eight to ten thousand dollars for that oh, why? because it was made by Reggie Parks, and he was 87 years old, and he was still he wasn't making a lot of them. But even as of a few years ago, he was still making the occasional belt. And the thing was, he was in his 80s. And so, I don't know if you know anything about being in your 80s, but your hand is not as steady as it was when you were young. And so, if he made you a winged eagle, it was not going to be perfect. But you know what? It was still made by Reggie Parks. And so, whatever whatever people were paying for these belts yesterday... I'm going to be paying a lot more for these belts today because I don't think it is it is an exaggeration to say that he was the greatest belt maker of all time, blood by like way up here. Yeah. So uh, yes. Yeah, it you is know, a Nikita, sad story. Nikita Molkovich is the guy that did the you know when you think of the old WWF title the uh, and the Sheik's title, I think the one that kind of looks like that that U.S. version of that U.S. title. He did that one. Uh, Dave Milliken is the guy that is most probably got to be the most renowned person who stepped in Reggie Parks' footsteps and I think may have actually learned from him, too. I, I, I certainly know he collaborated with him. He created a belt for Reggie Parks at the uh, Cauliflower Alley Club when they honored him there. So, you know, those belts are amazing, absolutely amazing. And big gold for me, Ric Flair's belt, still probably the you know most iconic one, the NWA Dome Globe. I'm not sure who made that one, but that was an an incredible belt too. And you know, somebody mentioned the Western States Heritage title, which was a gorgeous belt. And there were a lot of belts in that kind of design that the NWA used at the time. But talk about a belt that you know was far bigger than the championship that it actually was. That that thing was great looking and WWE. WWE, of course, they got to do WWE speak on their Twitter. They uh, issued a, a little statement here, and it's nice that they honored Reggie Parks, but they did it in such a WWE sort of way by saying that they are saddened to learn that legendary sports entertainer and championship title maker Reggie Parks passed away wow. at 87 because, you know, belt and strap are both banned words. Well, their belts, damn it. And you know what? I will agree with the chat that another uh, fantastic belt was, in fact, the IWGP championship belt. Oh, not not the new thing. Like, no, the offen- old one. Not, no offense to that thing, but uh, uh, the, the, the one prior to that. I think they're saying, I, I don't know about these versions or anything like that, but uh, the new one that looks like uh, Jeff Hardy made it for himself, not a big fan of that one. But uh, <laughs> no. the other one, I, I certainly did like that one. So. I thought the WWF's last, I mean, one of their kick-ass belts, I thought, was that undisputed title that they had, the black strap one that, you know, Brock Lesnar had. And I think it was around the time of The Rock and Triple H. I mean, that that was also a really awesome-looking belt. And, you know, it's one of those things, you know, the U.S. title belt didn't bother me, the spinner belt with John Cena, because I thought it was kind of a new concept and something that was fit for him. And sometimes when you do that with a championship belt, whether it be a, a pink strap on it like exotic adrian street or the ultimate warrior would use or doing something like that i think it makes it unique and i think it makes it kind of cool uh but there are other championships well see and that you you thought it sucked but there are other belts that i think suck like you know the copper penny belts the tag title belts i hated what was that toy where you you turned the arrow to the to the to the pig and you pulled the spell yeah it was like that (laughs) god that's what it was he was wearing a speak and spell but see here's the take that guy seriously as a champion that was Maybe one of he's the a problems. champion talker, which he was. That was one of the problems with the winged eagle belt for me because it looked like a belt that would be on a wrestler in a Hollywood movie that they won there. It was like, to what? me, compar- comparing that to Ric Flair, that $40,000 Ric Flair belt that looked like just a, a beautiful piece of gold with just yeah, world's looked like, heavyweight champion. It looked like you just dug it up out of a, uh, uh, out of, out of, like the gold rush. You just found a Stop big it. hunk of gold and like, That's, oh, should we design something out of it? Nah, just with that hunk of gold on a strap. I'd rather have strap. that than that. That toy Go that kill you some had. cow and put that thing on it. That'll be your championship <laughs> belt. That's what that was. Well, that was the Southwestern championship belt. You ever see that one had the cow skin on it? It was ridiculous. Well, they're all cow skin. That's what leather is. No, but Unless it you think it's alligator. Had, no, it made it look like it was Bessie. It had like, you know, white and black fur on it. All right. Well, get out of here. Back in a moment, everybody. Observe live. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.